Hi guys, in this episode we're going to be making our own DIY flaglight matrix. You might remember a little while ago we made ourselves a flaglight solution using an IR repeater and some cheap flaglight strips. This matrix however is a little more versatile as you see a little later on. For those that don't know, a flaglight box is a way to show you what flags are currently on the track in your given situation. So if there's a yellow out, if there's a blue flag because there's a faster car behind, if you've got the meatball flag because of damage, so on and so forth. This gives you a much easier to see device in your peripheral vision for highlighting those particular issues. Now with this project, I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. We're using SimHub's built-in sketches, so we don't have to do any coding with this project. We just have to do a little bit of soldering, gather the parts together and make sure that our circuit is well formed. Now a little disclaimer here, this project is going to use an external power source. So I've got a two amp power supply for this. However, given some testing, I think you could probably run without it and just take the power draw from the USB, albeit with much dimmer LEDs. Now my circuit will work without the power supply. However, you are vampirically leaching power from the voltage in to feed the matrix, and that's not going to be good for your microcontroller. So if you do intend to run this without it, I've given you an alternate circuit so you can try that instead. This project cost me around £35, uh, equates to around $45, and you can get it for a little bit cheaper if you don't mind waiting for shipping from China. So with all that said, let's go and have a look at the hardware. I've tried to keep this project quite lightweight. We have the panel, the matrix panel itself, which is a NeoPixel clone. It doesn't give you a perfect color representation, but it doesn't do a bad job. You can definitely see the difference between blues, greens, reds, etc. The only thing it struggles with a little bit is the difference between orange and yellow. It doesn't do a perfect job, but it is definitely worth saving that money as the Adafruit official unit is about three and a bit times more expensive. So we're using some of the recommendations from Adafruit here for this circuit. We're running with a 1000 UF capacitor in bypass so that it looked like it's creating a short between the positive and negative on the terminals for the input voltage. However, what that's doing is allowing us to just smooth out some of those spikes that might be coming in. And then we have a 450 ohm resistor for the data in. So that's from our data pin on the microcontroller to the data pin into our matrix. For powering this, we have a barrel jack power supply and that will supply us two amps, which should be more than enough for this project. The one I purchased comes with a nice screw connector for the barrel jack. So that allows us to screw our wires in without having to do any cutting and wiring. Finally, I'm going to be mounting this whole circuit to a permaprota board. These are supplied by Adafruit. They're a little expensive at £2.50 for the quarter size board, but I like the simplicity of them and transferring them from breadboard to your final circuit is pretty useful. There are other ways to solder your components together, so feel free to choose a cheaper solution for that. In the description, you can find a rough pricing for the components, but essentially what we have here is an Arduino Nano compatible board. The junction box I'm using for this came from China and the measurements for it are 90 by 115 millimeters and it is 40 millimeters deep. If you're willing to spend a little bit more money, you can grab this from Amazon. However, it will cost you a lot more money. I think it's about double the price. And that is not identical to the solution I'm using. I believe it has about uh, 10 mil more depth to it, but it's very similar. And then of course, because we're going to be doing a little bit of soldering, you're going to need a solder iron, some solder. Then I've used a hot glue gun to mount all the parts. You don't necessarily need a hot glue gun. You could use an alternate approach, but that's the way I went for this project. I think it's also a good idea to have a multimeter. It helps you to debug problems you have. Also, you can validate the polarity of your 
power supply so you don't get into the situation where you are accidentally reversing the circuit. So for the circuit itself, you can see the diagram on the screen now. And I've gone ahead and created a small repository with these diagrams on them to make your life easier. So you can have a look at on there and use that as your schematic for creating the circuit. Like I said earlier, I've gone for a recommended layout here with a capacitor and bypass to stop the power supply from shorting out the RGB matrix and it'll help prevent any light flicker. If you want to build the flag light without a power supply, I've also included an alternate circuit in the repository, which essentially moves the capacitor between your microcontroller and the matrix, and it uses the 5 volt out of the nano rather than the voltage in pin. It's always a good idea with a circuit like this to first of all breadboard it up, make sure everything is working before you actually commit to soldering the project. However, with the matrix, there's there's limited options in terms of being able to connect it up. So what I've done initially is I've soldered on the jumper wires here so I can go and test out the circuit. Once you've got your components in place, the power supply in, and you can see that your nano is actually receiving power, then you can go ahead and move to the next step of installing SimHub and getting your sketch in place. Obviously, with all this wired up, you're not gonna see much yet. So we wanna be able to see this work. Make sure we've got our orientation right for the screen. And if we're seeing any issues now, we can start to adjust. When you wire up your matrix, make sure you are connecting your jumpers to the data in and not the data output. That's more for daisy chaining future connections. And as we're only using one matrix with this project, we don't need that. We head on over to simhub-.com and download the latest version of SimHub. For the direct link, I've included that in the description. On first load, it'll ask for administrator privileges. Go ahead and do that and reload the application. Click on the Arduino section. If you have any other Arduino based devices, unplug them now so you don't accidentally wipe them and then click on my hardware. Make sure you have single Arduino selected and scan for your board. At this point, some nanos might need to have a chipset driver installed. This would be dependent on whatever board you picked. Find the driver for it and install that and then head on back over to SimHub. You should be able to scan and see your Arduino then. Open up the Arduino setup tool. We're using a Nano on this board. If you don't know which bootloader you're using, you can try and fail on the old one before you start using the new one. No harm will before your Nano in doing so, but you will just get a failed build. Give your Arduino a name that you aren't likely to forget. So if you're plugging this into other machines, you'll be able to identify which is your RGB matrix. Then just scoot on over to the RGB matrix option within the setup tool and make sure that is enabled. Select the COM port that your Nano is connected to and ensure that the pin enabled for data on your RGB matrix is the one that's showing up on the circuit in SimHub. Load the sketch onto your Arduino and then you're ready to test out your circuit. You should be able to initially see a flashing blue circle, which is essentially the SimHub logo. Now we're done with testing. I solder all the parts together as we had them arranged on the breadboard pretty much, but to save space, I'm using a quarter size perma proto board here and skipping the pins that we're not using. So I can then put the resistor in between that space where the pins would normally be for the nano. I'm also in this final version, reversing the location of the power circuit, just to have the power jack on the same side as the USB header. So when I'm threading those through, it's a little easier. Once all soldered together, we can screw on the barrel jack. The barrel jack will be hot glued to the back of the case and the hole I've drilled for it is exactly the same size as the barrel jack. So I have to really push that in. That with the hot glue, make sure that it won't pop out when I actually try to get the power supply in place. 
We hot glue the circuit to the back of the display so it keeps it out of the way and it doesn't look unsightly as we do have a clear case here. We then finally hot glue the whole of the matrix circuit combination to the transparent front. I had to do this actually a couple of times because the first time I did it, it wasn't quite square and looked pretty terrible. Finish off this project a little cleaner. What I've done is I've sprayed the junction box black. I am a mini painter and I've got loads of these spray paints available. Feel free to skip this step if you don't want to spend the money on that spray. But essentially what I've done is I've masked off the, the front of the case around where the matrix display will be and then sprayed over. If you have it, I would recommend using finishing tape and then masking the bulk of that section. The finish tape will make sure that you don't get bleed into your mask area. When we called this project a flag light box, I think we were underselling it slightly. With SimHub, we can also make sure that we are displaying our gears if we've hit the rev limiter and we have a spotter to be able to tell us if there is a car left or right. I've made some modifications to the basic profile that you get with SimHub that will additionally allow us to see the meatball flag on some games. I tested it on iRacing and ACC and it works fine. I've also taken the liberty of providing a different gear color when we have the pit limiter on. So we can see when we transition to and from the pit limiter. The LEDs on this unit are super bright. I run it at 50% and that is pretty glaring as it is. You can try to reduce this brightness and I'll leave that up to you. But I can't see you ever wanting to run it at 100% brightness. This project, it's using pretty cheap components and it's not flawless. But despite all of this, it still looks pretty damn good in the rig. I'm not going to get the full benefit of using this because I mostly race in VR. But when I'm doing endurance racing, teaming up with other drivers, it'd be pretty handy to have that available when I'm not sat at my rig. And I'm glad I've made this project because it shows me what SimHub can be capable of doing when spending very little money. The colors here are a little bit more muted than the Adafruit NeoPixel matrix. However, given that that particular matrix costs almost the same amount as our entire project. I think the saving that the matrix we chose produces is well worth it. The junction box for this project works quite well. It is a lot larger than the display itself and a 3D printed enclosure would have allowed us to keep the size a little smaller. If like me, you're in a small space, size is always gonna be important. However, it was nice to see what we could achieve using off the shelf parts. I went into this project thinking that an external power source will be compulsory. And a lot of the reading material looked at pretty much said the same thing. So we've obviously gone for a circuit which has a two amp power supply. However, in testing, I found that I could run without a power supply pretty sufficiently. Yes, you lose a little bit of the brightness of the unit, but you don't need the brightness that this unit can produce anyway. So I think if I was building this again, I might choose to not have that external power supply. If this project has inspired you to make this or an adapted version, I'd really like to know, please leave a message in the comments below detailing what you've done. It would be awesome to share that feedback with the community. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you soon. Goodbye for now, guys.